Yo, I've been using the 14 inch M4 Max MacBook Pro for the last month and today I'll be going over my experience with it and letting you know whether it's worth the money from my real world usage. I bought this machine for editing in DaVinci Resolve, web development, and game development with Unreal Engine and Blender. So this is the base binned M4 Max model with 36 gigabytes of RAM, a one terabyte SSD, a 14 core CPU, and 32 core GPU. I'm coming from daily driving the base M3 Pro model, which was a good machine still, but over the last year, it was struggling at times to handle editing with multiple other programs open, and I didn't bother throwing something heavier like Blender or Unreal at it with 18 gigabytes of RAM. The M4 Max chip is a significant jump in power from the M3 Pro, but RAM is something I regret discounting earlier as it's made a big improvement in my day-to-day -day workflow. Things do feel snappier and the lag spikes I was constantly getting during editing haven't been anywhere near as bad. I do most of my work on an external 4 terabyte SSD because it makes it easier to jump between my Mac and Windows PC when working working in Unreal, plus it saves money not having to buy as large of an internal SSD. That said, I do think that for most people, one terabyte is the sweet spot. I found that 512 is on the low side even when just having the apps I use for my workflow and random files I create day to day, those just fill up the drive very fast. So I went with the 14 inch model mainly because I spend 80% of the time working off of my ultra wide monitor, so it doesn't really make sense to spend the extra money for more screen real estate that I don't really need most of the time. And when I'm traveling, I don't like to carry around with the 16 inch. I can't lie, I love the screen real estate it has, and there's times that the 14 inch can feel a little bit cramped, but for me, it's definitely worth the trade off for just how much easier it is to carry around and pull out wherever I am. Some people have mentioned that the M4 Max doesn't make sense with the 14 inch because of thermal throttling, which I understand and we'll talk about that more in a bit, but for me, I'm willing to make the trade off. Now this year we got a new display option which is nano texture and this helps to reduce glares on the screen and from other people I've heard it's actually making the screen look a lot better. I didn't personally go with it because anti-glare screens tend to distort your colors and visual clarity which if you're doing a lot of creative work is not great. Another downside is it will be a lot more prone to getting dirty and you have to be more careful when you clean it. I regret not at least getting to see what the nano texture looked like in person, and if you're someone who works outside, I recommend you take a look at it, but otherwise I don't really regret not getting it. So talking about the actual performance, I don't want to spend too much time looking at synthetic benchmarks or core counts because it doesn't say much about what you're getting day to day, but I will quickly show you this table that compares all four max chips and their Geekbench scores. In each cell, I have the percentage increase from the M1, M2, and M3 max in order, and you can see that year over year, the improvements are usually pretty small, and this is what you'd expect. There's rarely any case I'd recommend upgrading if you've only had a machine for a year or two. And I know that's ironic coming from me as a YouTuber who's bought these almost every year, but it is really my job to buy and check out these machines. That said, this year is the first year that depending on your workflow, it could make sense to go from the M1 or M1 Max to this M4 Max. The improvement after four years of progress is somewhat significant. And if in that time you've begun editing higher resolution footage and working in a more complex program like Blender or Unreal with larger projects, that jump could be worth the money. For me, even coming from the M3 Pro, I've seen a significant improvement in how the Mac handles my work. To be fair, a lot of that is due to the increased RAM, but the better GPU has been much smoother in both Blender and Unreal. Unreal Engine is not a program that's super well optimized on Mac or even Windows if we're being fair, but I've been shocked at just how well it's been handling on here. Just for reference, in the first person template, a fresh project will run around 65 to 80 FPS in the editor and 65 to 70 FPS while playing the preview. In the third person template, a new project runs around 70 to 90 FPS in the editor and 65 to 80 FPS while playing the preview. The performance will take a hit once you're in a heavier project. I've been working on my first indie horror game and there's definitely optimizations that need to be made, but that's been running around 50 to 75 FPS in the editor 
and 45 to 50 FPS in the preview. Now, the Mac isn't my primary game development machine. I still prefer working on my 4080 PC build, but that being said, having the ability to move my SSD between the two machines and work on here while on the go is very convenient, and this performance is completely fine for me. Now, Blender is another program I only recently started to play around with, but it's ran incredibly well for me with rarely any stutters or freezes. If you're working in any sort of 3D software, Software, I highly recommend you bump up your RAM at the very least and consider going for the Mac chip if you think it makes sense. Now, Resolve is probably the third most demanding part of my workflow and is the editing software I use to make all of these videos. With the M3 Pro over the last year, every time I would edit, I had some sort of freeze. And again, I think this is mostly down to RAM as I always have multiple programs open while I edit that's ultimately slowing it down. With this machine, I've yet to have any issues and I've already edited three full videos. I gave my brother my M3 Pro, so I don't have any specific benchmarks, but because the Max chips have two media engines, the export times will be faster, but frankly, they were already just a few minutes, which making that a little faster doesn't make any difference to me. Now, lastly, I code with Python, Ruby, and Golang, along with Next.js for my web development purposes, and of course, that runs great on here. That's not something you need the Max chip for, and I don't notice any difference that already ran great. So I've been coding with with languages like Python for years now, but I know that as a beginner, it can seem very daunting, but that's where today's sponsor, Brilliant, comes in. Brilliant is an online learning platform that helps you get over the complexity of technical skills by learning through doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. With their first principles approach, you're learning real problem-solving skills and understanding new topics from the ground up. You're not just memorizing, but learning how to learn and think through complex problems differently. Learning a little bit each day is one of the most effective ways to acquire new skills, and Brilliant makes it easy to build real knowledge in just a few minutes each day. Brilliant has a growing number of programming courses that are a great way to build foundations and learn real-world applications. You can take a class like Thinking and Code that introduces you to computational problem solving, or venture into Applied Python where you learn how to analyze and generate text with code. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash colcacamus or click the first link in the description. You'll also get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So with the raw performance out of the way, the real thing to talk about when it comes to the 14-inch Max chip is the thermals. With this smaller chassis, you are making a sacrifice here. First off, the battery will be worse than the 16-inch and both of the M4 Pro models because it's smaller than the 16-inch one and draws more power with this more powerful chip. In Unreal, for example, that's a heavy program that drains my battery from a full charge to dead in probably two to three hours max. If I'm just on the go doing some web development, that lasts easily all day and it's not a problem. When taking a look at Apple's battery ratings, you're getting 13 hours of web browsing, which is an extra hour from the M3 Max. Video streaming, on the other hand, is the same as the M3 Max at 18 hours. Now, anytime I'm doing something more than web browsing or light coding, this laptop does get hot and often I can hear the fans kick on. This mostly happens in Unreal and Blender just because how heavy both of those are, but when in Resolve for probably 30 minutes to an hour is where I personally start to notice the Mac heating up. If you want to squeeze the absolute most battery and power out of your MacBook without it getting excessively hot, the 16 inch is going to be the better option. But for me, I just preferred the 14 inch and I'm okay making that sacrifice for portability. So bringing it all together, what's the deal with the M4 Max? Personally, I think that if you're say on the M1 Max or M1 Pro and your workflow has become significantly heavier since you got that machine, this is probably the first year where I could start to recommend you look at the new model and give it some thought. I'll say that for most people, any Apple Silicon Mac is good enough to last five, six, seven plus years. But if you are going to upgrade, I recommend you future-proof yourself with more RAM than you currently think you need, as that made a big difference for me. And at the very least, go with one terabyte for your SSD so that you have a good baseline and then save money with an external drive because as you go higher in storage, Apple's prices just get ridiculous. I have been been checking out the Mac every year except for the M2s because I am a YouTuber and I'm fortunate enough that I get to try out these new laptops, but right now the M4 Max is perfect for my workflow and I could easily continue to use this for another 5 plus years without upgrading. If you're on the edge and don't really know if you should upgrade, 
I'd say wait one to two years because that's when we're getting the full refresh redesign of these MacBooks. And I'm thinking will be the first time since the M1 came out that it's going to be an obvious upgrade for a lot of people. Let me know what you think down below. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, you'll want to watch this one next where I go deep into how I set up this MacBook for programming. Thanks for watching and take care.